You ready? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Hi. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> I'm Mal, and what's your name? Beverly. Beverly. And Baby's at school. And her big brother Baylor is at school right now. Um, so, so what are we here? Right now? So if you're stuck with just us, that's yeah. right. <laughs> um, and, then, and then we're gonna go for Kelly later. Right? And then we'll go pick him up later. Yeah, yeah. So you just have us for a little bit, and then yeah. he'll be back, and maybe he'll jump in here sometime. Yeah. Would that be cool for brother to jump on too? Yeah. We'll have to see if it's something he wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So do you, All right. do you remember what we're gonna talk about? Mm -hmm. What are we gonna talk about? Baby. That's right. Hey! <laughs> yeah, so we have decided that we are going to start vlogging, obviously. I already told you guys. <laughs> Let's start vlogging. <laughs> yes. All right, so it's been decided. What are we going to start doing, Bevy? Mm, vlogging. <laughs> exactly, Beverly. We're going to start vlogging and yep. share our experience and loop you into everything that we're doing and that we're going through. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm Mal and this is Beverly. Yeah. She is how old? Four. Four years old. And this is one, two, three. Uh, oh wait. One, two, three, four. Exactly. Four years old. That's how many times you've been around the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our second journey. The first journey we started in January of 2016. Beverly was barely two years old. She had just had her second birthday. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then it's, she was- It's a known. birthday party. Yes. And then she was there for me throughout the whole thing. Came to a lot of the doctor appointments, rubbed my belly, sang stories to the baby, helped, helped me around the house, and just was such a great helper and my biggest support person. Huh. And, and she was only two. And now I'm going to do it again. And now she's going to do it again. I know how to do things to make her happy so her belly grows and her baby grows. That's right. And we're so excited and so ready to grow this baby and to take care of this baby. And so I can make bucks to her. It's, this one's a he too. So we've decided to keep the identities of the baby and the family and the parents private. Our intent through this is to share our experience and what we're going through and just our side of things and our perspective. Um, not to put the spotlight on them, but to kind of educate people and answer questions about surrogacy because it is kind of more of a foreign concept than I initially had like thought it was to most people. We're going to have code names for both babies. So the first surrogate babe that was a healthy baby boy, we decided to call baby Cupid. And then this embryo that we just transferred now, we're going to refer to as baby bubbles. Baby bubbles! Baby so bubbles. cute! But, but I'm not going to tell the name, the, the, the real name, because it's price only for us and the family that we want to tell. And we're going to protect the baby because they're just yeah. little, he's just a little baby and we want to protect the family and respect and, their and, privacy. And it will post the respect for for stuck babies so they grow and so so we because we don't want to share babies always and we want to keep them healthy that's right and that's our goal this time that was our goal the first time was to help grow a healthy baby boy and we have the same goal this time and 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 we want to make sure the the boy's healthy and it's really good so it doesn't get all sick and so does it just have germs and 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 so we so we don't make them sick. That's right. It's our job to look to, after him, protect yeah, him and take care of him. Yeah, right protect him and just be helpful for for him and be friendly and just read books to him. Yes. And, and do laundry for him. <laughs> we could go on forever about all this stuff, right? There's lots of different aspects that it takes to being able to grow this baby and protect him and keep him healthy and safe. Yeah. But right now, we're gonna talk a little bit about the first journey. Yeah, the first journey that we did. So in December of 2015, my husband and I bought our first house 
which is where we're living now. Our son Baylor had just turned four, and our daughter Beverly had just turned two. No, no, it was it was four. No, 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 in December 2015, so two years ago, you had just turned two. So this was when you were still little. Yeah. So we had kind of felt that we had, we were at a good place to be able to pursue something that had always interested me. Um, I myself was adopted. Um, yep. I was adopted as a baby, mm -hmm. and I have a great relationship with both my mother and my birth mother, yeah. and they are both wonderful grandmas, yeah. my Beverly and her brother yeah. Taylor. My brother's also adopted. He is four years younger than me. All growing up, my mom and my dad were always very open about our adoption, yeah. were willing yeah. to answer any questions we had. They were very encouraging and supportive of us ever wanting to pursue a relationship with our birth families or to know more about where we came from. The adoption was never looked at as something negative or something to be ashamed of. It was something they were proud of and encouraged both us to be proud of as well. Um, and a main, a main theme that kind of stuck with me was how my mom would always say she was so incredibly grateful for two women who helped her become a mother and that she could not have done it without the selflessness of these other incredible women. And so just growing up, yeah. <laughs> just growing up and hearing my mom's appreciation and gratitude towards okay. these people mm -hmm. was extremely inspiring to me. Um, it's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. And it's so, very respected for her. Yes. And so after I grew up and had two beautiful, wonderful babies of my own. Two, two. Uh, it was Bay at first and then me. That's right. So my pregnancies with both Baylor and Beverly were very smooth, very easy. I did both natural, drug-free births, and it was incredible experiences. The labors were fairly quick, fairly easy, no problems for both of them. And it kind of inspired me that maybe this was something I was meant to be doing, was to be helping other families by carrying a baby for them that couldn't get pregnant on their own. So January 2016, I signed up with my current agency and began all the paperwork and the screening, the medical history, the site clearance, everything. Yeah. Everything. It was very involved. Um, and the hard work to do her phone calls and do a writing, everything for a pregnant. That's right. And Beverly was a part of the whole thing, even though she was only two at the time. Yeah. Back then, Baylor was already in school, so he wasn't here during the days. But Bev has been with me every step of the way. Yep. The screening and all the pre-stuff was very intense and very thorough through the agency. But that was actually something that really attracted me to them, was to know that they weren't in a rush to try to get you in and get you matched and get you going. That they wanted to make sure that it was the right fit for you and that you were ready and knew what you're getting yourself into and that you were prepared and had all the resources and education you needed. Another thing that really attracted me to them was how surrogate friendly they were. They are huge advocates for their surrogates. They're always in your corner. They have monthly support meetings where all the surrogates get together and they have a counselor that comes and just answers questions and just helps you not to feel alone and helps you not feel crazy when you're going through yeah. something that's totally different and totally and unique. So, we go so after we went through all the screening and the medical clearance and everything, um, we got to the point where we were starting to get matched meaning they would send us profiles of couples, intended parents, that they thought would be a good fit to us based on the screening they did on myself, the surrogate, and the screening that they did on the parents. Basically what you want to get out of the journey and how many embryos you want to transfer, your viewpoints on different things that could arise throughout the process. Um, just kind of making sure you're on the same page and have the same mindset and same expectations. Obviously nothing's guaranteed, but they do their best to try to make it the best fit as they can. We got our first batch of profiles and instantly one stood out to us over them all. My husband and I wanted to be very thorough and so we're like we really like these ones but we don't want to jump the gun. This is a huge commitment. Let's maybe look at some more just to be absolutely sure. So we got another batch and we looked through them and just every single person we were like the first one was it. Like these were the ones. The main thing that really stuck out to us was through their entire profile, 
it was so kid oriented. It wasn't, well, I've accomplished this and this and this in life. And so for me, the next step is to have kids. Their approach to it was very different. It was that they had so much love and so much that they wanted to share and give to a child. And it, it's something that really stood out to us and stuck with us. Not to say we don't wanna help everybody, but just we felt that was the best fit for us and that we would be the best fit for them. So we matched with them. Um, they were international, so we didn't get a chance to meet them in person right away, but we did Skype with them immediately. And everything that we had interpreted off the profile came true. They were just as incredible, probably more so than we could have ever imagined. And we just felt like we got along with them right away and that they were amazing people. And we were so excited to be able to help them. So once we got matched, we began the contract process. And I worked with a lawyer and they worked with their lawyer and we just kind of reviewed the contracts. It was very standard and straightforward surrogacy contracts. It did take, I want to say about a month at that time to go through just because it's through the lawyers and the back and forth and just the whole process. So after the contracts were completed, I was able to get to go to the fertility clinic and receive a calendar with a timeline for the transfer. I began hormones, the delestrogen, which I took every three days. It was an injection. Um, and then the progesterone, I began a couple weeks after, and that was daily. That was the one I hated, and I will curse for the rest of my life. It sucks. <laughs> um, it's rough. It's extremely rough. It is the worst thing I've ever gone through. <laughs> Labor was a breeze compared to it. So I began the progesterone and that was daily. And I took it for about two weeks before our scheduled transfer. The transfer was on a Monday and I met the parents in person for the first time the Saturday before. We had Skyped and we had talked and everything, but the first face-to-face -face meeting was the Saturday before the transfer. So I was already on the hormones, I was already all set and in motion. Our kids were there, which apparently isn't necessarily the common in meeting the parents for the first time, but they wanted the kids to be there. We wanted the kids to be there because we are very adamant about keeping our kids involved and being open with the children about everything that's going on in our lives because it does affect their lives. At the end of the meeting, one of the parents took Baylor and they were walking around. And if you know Baylor at all, he is not somebody who opens up quickly. He is more reserved and observant and you have to earn his trust and you have to earn his affection. And I have never pushed him out of that. I've always stood by him and never never forced affection or attention from him to anybody. It was monumentous when he asked to go and walk with one of the parents and to go hang out with them. It was just all stars aligned, another amazing sign that it was meant to be and that this was a good fit. So that was Saturday and then we returned home and Sunday we dropped the kids off at my dad's and his girlfriend's and they were gonna have a sleepover because Sunday night we went up to LA and we stayed in a hotel overnight to not have to worry about traffic to get up there Monday for the transfer. I remember the morning so vividly. It was so, so powerful just to be in that presence and to understand this amazing thing we were trying to accomplish together. To create a child, to create a family it's still mind blowing to me. So after we had breakfast, we went all went over to the fertility clinic, checked in, did labs, and then they pulled me back. They do the transfer in an operating room and you have the option to take Valium. I chose to take it because I wanted to do everything in my power to help the transfer stick, to be as relaxed as I could be, as calm as I could be, as stress-free as I could be. Unfortunately, my husband was not allowed to come into the operating room. They only allow one additional person, or in the case of a surrogacy, they will allow the two parents, but not more than that. So my husband had to wait out in the lobby. The parents were incredible. They offered for him to come in instead of them. And we both were like, of course not. Like, it's your child, you're coming in. 
it was just a testament to their character that that is something that they would even offer. We went back into the OR and it's such a quick process. They rolled in the incubator and we were all allowed to come up and look in the microscope and see the little embryo. You can't see it with your naked eye. So it's insane to think that this is something that will grow, could grow into a baby, into a child, into a human. It is so surreal of a thought, of a concept. And then we began the transfer. So you can't really see anything. You can't really feel anything because it's microscopic. But we got to watch on the ultrasound. The doctor had told us, you're not really gonna be able to see much. It's just a little couple bubbles. And that's the implant. And that's as far, that's, that's the whole ta-da about it. So the doctor kind of pointed out to us what it is we were looking at, which was just, it seemed almost anticlimactic. It was like, does it? Like, that quick, that easy? Uh, and they're like, yeah, you're good to go. And so they like helped me sit up and like hopped me off the table and I walked to like the bed. And they're like, we do have you like lie down for 20 minutes. And then that's it. As we were in the OR and able to look at the embryo and began the transfer, that's when the reality hit one of the parents and they started to tear up and they, they leaned over and they told me, this could make me a parent. Like, this is it. It seems so far-fetched and so out of reach and unobtainable for some of these parents at the thought that they would ever get to be here and get to be having a child of their own. That was so humbling to like hear and to see and to experience. After I rested for the 20 minutes, they wheeled me down to the car and helped me get in and we're like, see you later. <laughs> so my husband drove me home. We went home and rested. The only orders after the transfer is to be a couch potato. But other than that, like you just kind of get a chill for the day and then resume normal life the next day. Uh, so that's what we did. And yeah, I'll continue this story and go into the rest of the pregnancy a little bit later. But it's time to go get Baylor. So I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.